2. Part 2 of Isaiah chapter 40. So we were going through where each one, each letter was the next phrase. Now we're on verse 27, lining up with the letter pay. And again, I didn't go through and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that this is about a pay, but I've just started with the Aleph, because it said, to whom will you compare me? And it's like, well, the Aleph, Beth. Idols, hey, look, it lines up with the letter Bet. Gimel, hey, lining up with making combinations. And so forth, and here we are, and now we're at verse 27, and this is what it says in the... Noon is the 14th, Psalmic is the 15th, I in 16, so pay is the 17th letter. And this is what it says. Why is it said? Pay is a mouth that speaks, a mouth that opens opens understanding. Kind of like pay follows eye in, so it could be an open eye, but pay is a mouth, so it's an open mouth. Why is it said, He'll, he's going to get his, he will get what he's got coming, what goes around comes around. Why do you think people have those sayings? That, they're true. Well, how, why are they true? <laughs> because that's the way so. that, that Yahuwah Elohim built the universe. A man's way will be returned upon his own head, evil for evil, good for good. He'll get his. All these guys burning down the cities, throwing stuff, shooting laser beams on each other's eyes, throwing bricks. You're going to get yours. I'm not condoning one side or the other. I'm saying, where's the righteousness? Where's the goodness? You're supposed to be a model of what's right. You think we're going to listen to you because you can break things and burn things and yell and scream and destroy? Is that, is that better? Be a model of righteousness. What goes around comes around. Why is it said that words are a direct revelation of what's hidden in my heart? Well, if the scriptures tell us that as we speak, it's, it's an it's, it's a outflowing of what's in our heart, then if this Hebrew Aleph bet is what Yahuwah Zavot, our Elohim, spoke, then to comprehend these 22 letters and to, to understand the Ivrit, the, the Hebrew language, is to comprehend Yahweh's heart as the terms of his preferred and chosen expression. He didn't speak in English. He didn't name him Jesus. If anything, it would be Yahshua or Yahusha. Hebrew. Yahuwah Shua. Yahweh saves. To comprehend the meaning of these 22 letters is pictographically, and then there's a numeric, which they call gamatria, a numeric value. The, the picture value of each letter, and then how the letter fits together in a sequence, all that is by Yahuwah's design. I, as I've said before, I disagree with the, world, the world's leading authorities as scholars of language, etymology, developing language through cultures. They believe, they, the, the world's best scholars of the ancient Semitic language, the ancient what became Hebrew, Greek, Latin, English, they believe that primitive peoples took symbols, drawn imagery of the stuff from their culture, a camel, an ox, a tent, a fish hook, a fish skeleton, a, a seed sprout, a fence, and they made them alphabet letters. I completely disagree. They happen to coincide with the stuff that humans use on the face of the earth to conduct their lifestyle, but these are pictures of the kingdom of heaven's culture, Yahweh's Moedim. Those are the pictures that are in the Hebrew alphabet letters, and for whatever reason, literally, veritably, virtually, none of the best of the world's scholars seem to validate this, or know this, or appreciate this, they are disturbed and rile up, recoil at the very thought of this. Check out what they say. Michael Brown, Michael Heiser, Miles Jones, Nehemiah Gordon. Even sadly to say, Isaac Moseson hates this stuff, but I, he has a great book, Origin of Speeches. 
get the book. He's a wonderful author and a brilliant man. I agree with everything he says other than his disdain for the Paleo-Hebrew. But whatever, just saying, this stuff is unacceptable to many. The pay is the open mouth. So what we're saying is, if, if, the, if these words are the opening of Yahuwah's heart, and other people can't see it, doesn't mean you can't see it. Just look, consider it. Listen to what he said. Look at everything he said. Read what's in these words. Look at the pictures. Another thing that said, that which follows as payment or wages after work, after work, as footprints follow a walker, as a wake follows a ship, as it was stipulated. That's all the definition of the word Jacob, Yaakov, as it, actually Yod, Ayn Kuf Bet. As payment or wages after working, a paycheck, as footprints follow somebody who walks, like footprints in the snow or along a beach, as a wake follows a ship, as it was stipulated, he who walks straight, right, just, as instructed, will be revealed the hidden secret. You walk in righteousness and you'll be able to see the secret. Will find himself hidden in secret. That's the hidden secret, apparently, is that if we walk in Yahweh's ways, Yahuwah, our Elohim, will hide us away in a place of His refuge. That's what He said. And then there's the statement, My way is the place of Yahuwah, is the place of my Elohim, the place of my equilibrium. And then Yahweh says, balancing of scales. When we find equilibrium in what He said, balance, that everything is, reality is, is stabilized, like a gyroscope spinning that can't be tipped over, everything, everything right is in Yahweh's words and understanding the, the alphabet of Hebrew and what he said and how all the words are built. And everything he said, the contract covenant between Yahuwah and Israel is the foundational balance, like a teeter-totter of the universe. And when we start doing righteousness, Zadokah, then the only way for Yahuwah to balance the scales, like the big arm of the, go like this, you know, scales with holding two baskets and weighting and tipping the, he says, when mishpat is like water, mishpat is the word for balanced scales of justice. When we do just, when we do right, when we do what is appropriate without taking advantage of anybody. Because, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing another verse I've mentioned before in another video, because evil weighs nothing. Fools, idiots, there's nothing to them. So when we do mishvat, right ruling, justice, rightly, it puts a weight on our side of the teeter-totter and then come rushing in like a river is zadikah, which is righteousness, but also victory, deliverance, and salvation. So, Yahuwah says, when I bring mishpat, he will transition. Or I could flip that around and say, when we do mishpat, when we start doing the right thing, if you have a protest, you can protest, but make sure you're right in the protest and that you protest rightly, and then Yahuwah will bring the transition. That was verse 27. Verse 28, lining up with the letter Zadi. Hello! And I say the word hello because it's Hey, Lamed Vav Aleph, which is pronounced hello, and it's simply translated, is it not? But it's kind of like where we get the word, hello, wake up, can't you see this? Verse 28. He knows if there's no listening going on, worldwide forever, Yahuwah created, filled up the volume, that's Bet Resh Aleph, or Bet Resh Aleph, hey, full to the limit. The earth will not fatigue, will not wear away and fail. Impossible to end. Earth, it will not fail, it will not end without. That's an interesting thing because we hear that, I think there's a New Testament verse about the earth is going to wear out like an old rag and it's like it's going to get worn and tattered. It's like, but this is saying that it won't fail, that Yahweh has built the earth to sustain until, until what? The earth can't fail until what? Kuf. Spy out, calculate, Examine the understanding of his building design pattern. Philosophically investigate. Well, that's verse 28. And if I look up the exact phrasing of that, 
it's uh, the earth will not yod yod aleph pay, which is to faint or fatigue, and will not weary yod yod gimel ayin aleph yod nun without het kuf resh. It means to spy out, fathom, search, calculate, examine, and philosophize or philosophically investigate. That's what we're doing. That's this study of erectology. It's not just erectology, it's droshing, but what I'm saying, the whole idea of going back and analyzing letter by letter, word for word, what did he say and how does it fit and how is Yeshua revealed in the keeping of the Torah? It's not Judaism, it's not Christianity, it's just what did Yahweh said and how do we do it? That's what this is. Then the last word is Lamed Tav Bet Vav Nun Tav Vav. La Tabon To. Pattern, design, building. It's the Mishkan pattern. Same word for pattern. And he's saying here that the world will not fail and impossible to end without or until, unless, spy out, calculate, examine the understanding of his building, design, pattern, philosophically investigate. It's the Mishkan pattern being the basis of the erectology study. There, that's what it is. I mean, I'm plugging that in, but it's begging to have that answer, as far as I can see. Amazing. Just like I said in the other video there. This is just now happening. We're in sync with this incredible timing. So to think that he's failed us or we're going to get tribulated or we're all going to get chewed up by the NWO, the beast, the coronavirus. Yahweh has designed all kinds of stuff and we're going to do another video about Isaiah 41 following this which seems to address these very matters letter by letter according to the alphabet sequence again. It's really amazing. Pertinent for these times including vaccinations with needles to uh, immunize. But you can't see that in English. Verse 29, lining up with the resh. Remember, resh means exalted, honored man, to stand up as a dignitary. Give, teach, to he who is weary, vigorous strength. To the lacking, those who are without, man up. Determine to have fortitude. It's telling us that we need to make the most of the time allotted. Yeah powerfully resist the slumbering. Argue, endeavor, strive, oppose the lethargy. That's what this is saying. Oppose the lethargy. Don't let them lull you to sleep. Don't get exhausted. Turn off the YouTube. Turn off the internet, the Facebook. Well, you can turn on YouTube if you want to watch this. but Turn it off and ponder the alphabet. Shin, verse 30. Yet they will falter, even pumped up youths. And they will faint, weak and despaired, select warriors in their prime. Like a heavy axe will cause even the grandest of trees to fall. They will be misled, overthrown, stagger in their frail weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Tav, verse 31. My hope, Yahuwah, will cause it to be. What it's saying is, I am hoping, I am expecting, I am trusting, and I have confidence that Yahuwah, who has arranged, ordered, designed, built everything to work according to the plan, can sustain it and cause it to exist. And that plan is the Hebrew alphabet letter sequence. 22 letters in that order. Some people have suggested that a couple of the letters have got misordered or shuffled around. I can, I can follow them in Proverbs 31, Ashat Chayil, the valiant woman, in Psalms 119, and in places like this. It seems like it fits the letters perfectly, so I disagree that the alphabetic sequence has gotten scrambled. Back to uh, Tav, verse 31. My stress, my expectation, he will barter in exchange and replace with vigor. Think about that. If I hope with stress and expect, that's a commodity of value that when I bring it to the bargaining table, I bring my stress and hope and expectation, trusting in Yahweh, and He then brings and swaps me measure for measure, like carrots for five dollars. 
I bring five dollars, he brings carrots, we swap, now each owns the other stuff. I bring hope and stress and expectation, and he, re he replaces it with vigor. That's what this says. Battered down by force, he will lift up. Promote to a higher dignity, elevate with excellent success. We bring hope and trust and expecting his words to be true, and to him that is a valuable commodity that he wants to trade for us, and he gives us vigor, elevation, higher dignity, and excellent success. It's an economy, the kingdom of heaven. My kava is the valuable commodity I bring. It will be counted as the pretext for ascending. I will recover, purified, lift up, soaring on strong pinions like eagles. He will run quickly, riding as a jockey. He will conduct the course, run the race, and not be exhausted as one doing the running. You might be familiar with this verse, Isaiah 40, verse 31. Those who hope in Yahweh will renew their strength, they'll mount up his wings as eagles. You read it literally, excuse me, word for word, it reads differently. I will recover, purified, lift up, soaring on strong pinions, if I bring kava, kufvav, to the bargaining table. It'll be counted as the pretext for ascending. I'm, I'm reiterating here. Running quickly, riding as a jockey. In other words, the jockey, it's an exercise. I mean, they have, have to hang on the horse, but it's the horse doing the running. He will conduct us doing running so that we won't be exhausted. He, that one will walk the halakha as instructed and not be fatigued or faint in the gloom of darkness. We do what Yahweh said and there's no reason for us to faint in the gloom of what's going on around us. Now, one more thing I want to show you about Isaiah 40 here. So what I did is saying, okay, the first order of business, Yahweh says, to whom would you like me? That's in the Aleph position. But what is Aleph? Well, Aleph is an ox. Aleph is the plan, the intention, the purpose. But Aleph is also something we can't identify. So now I'm going to run through one more time the 22 letters and say, let's look at the basic meaning of each letter and double check it or compare it to the thing I just wrote, what I just read in Isaiah 40. So then it's, it's re-expressing what the alphabet letters mean, what their value is, not just pictographically, Aleph is an ox, Bet is a house, Gimel is a camel, Dalit's a door. For those of you who don't know, hey is the word the, like a window or a breath, an expression. Vav is, an, is the word and or but, it's a connector, a hook. Zion is to be cut off, it's a weapon. Ket is a fence. Tet is something round, like a round rock, like a potter's wheel. They say it's a snake because snakes coil, but it's not a snake, it's something round, it's spinning, like hands on a clock or a compass. Yod, a working hand that grabs, a powerful hand, that cough, an open hand. Lamed, a shepherd's staff. Mem, water. Noon, a sprout, something living in an environment, so Mem's the environment, like, so Mem's not necessarily water, but Mem is also womb, like water, and Mem, Noon is what grows in it and jumps out of it. Samic, is a picture of a tree. It's an engineered structure, like a backbone, a, a, a tree with branches, a vertebrae with ribs. Eye in his eyeball, pay his mouth. Zadi, a fish hook, kuf, back of the head, or that which follows. It's kind of in the distance, a projection. Long reach, like a monkey. Resh, exalted man, lifted up with honor. Sheen, teeth and fire, that which consumes. And Tav is a marker, a sign. Now, that's the basic pictographic meaning <coughs> of each letter. But coupling the meaning of each letter then with the things we just wrote, I'll go through again. Aleph, silent, undeterminable, invisible, infinite, beyond our capacity to fathom. So we can't compare them to anybody then. Because if we tried to compare them to something or somebody, we'd find something else that we can wrap our mind around. And by definition, Aleph, you can't wrap your mind around. So this is defining what each one of the letters mean. This is, this is to help you study to comprehend the Aleph Bet. Bet. Absolutely no form or likeness is tolerable or fitting. In fact, the word idol means 
worthless chips or fragments which are disqualified and unfit. So if you shave something and you end up with sawdust, you say, well, that's not the thing. I'm, I'm making that thing. The, the craftsman who forms the idol is as worthlessly unfit and disqualified as the shavings that he created by carving the image. So when people have a portrait of Jesus or a sculptor of Jesus, that's an idol. It disqualifies you. His words. No former likeness. Letter bet. Bet is a former likeness. Gimel. Search all you want. No yabbat. No divination or witchcraft or necromancy. Yeah, but when uh, no yabbats. No witchcraft. No necromancy. No divination. No f making combinations of if I throw some this, that, and cast spells and add these potions and try to cause something and figure out something. No, just do what he said. Dalit, the door is simply, I put before you life and death, choose life. Hey, the eye in the pinnacle of the mountain logo is not the Torah of Yahuwah. Hey, listen! Vav, wa, a man must discern between clean and unclean, the kadosh versus the profane. The vav, shaped like a goblet. Number six, man is the, they say is the number for six. Vav is the masculine suffix. Dump everything in and you've got to now filter out. You've got to discern between the clean and the unclean. That's what a man is supposed to do. When Adam ate that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, are we still under that curse? Well, no, we are not under the curse. Listen. Ever since then, we have to, we must, the word shomer, discern between clean and unclean, kadosh and profane, and he tells us to do it numerous times. That's our primary occupation. So quit eating what he said isn't food, which he said is unclean, which we better not eat or it will abominate us, and if we don't listen to him about it, he can't hear our prayers. Zion, if we are all to have equal opportunity. If everybody had the same equal opportunity, the outcome could never be measured equally. Evaluation is determined by how each person makes use of talents and situations, all of which are unique. Every human trial is similar but different, barely comparable. What measure is success, each individual standing at the throne of judgment? Everybody has different physical abilities and handicaps. <coughs> Everybody's born in a different time and place. Everybody has a different set of social interactions and parental up upbringings and, and financial environments. We're all different. What you do with what you have is what you're going to answer for at the throne of judgment. There's a lot of squawk these days about people having equal opportunity and equal outcome. It's impossible. That's not the way the world was built. Chet, there's a fence. What have I done with the concept of creator of the heavens and earth? Did I quest or did I ignore? Why do I exist? Should I be tending my attention towards something? Moshe said, I put before you life and death. I suggest you choose life. Is there a creator, or was everything just evolved into being? What have you done with the question, why am I here? How did this place get here? Yeah, never mind, doesn't matter. Okay, your disregard is what you'll be held accountable for. If the thought comes to mind, did somebody create this place? Search, quest, find out. Read the Bible, read whatever you need to read. Go ahead and ponder other philosophies and other religions, if you will. Think. Use your head. I suggest the answers in the Torah. I suggest the answers in the Bible, in the Hebrew alphabet. In Yeshua, being Mashiach. Conduct your own search. Letter Tet. See, head, head is a fence, and if we are, if the first seven letters are standing outside the Chet, and the letter Chet just re represents the kingdom of yod heh vav -Hey, Excuse me. You'll never know what's inside until you 
engage yod heh vav -Hey to go in, and you're left outside at the place of the weapon, cut off. The letter Chet is a fence that's only understood what's on the other side is by entering that fence. And if Yeshua said, come to me, I'm the door, nobody can enter my Father's house except through me, if you don't come to him, you're not going to have the same access as if you try to negotiate it alone. Just like it, the letter bet, we can look at Aleph and say, well, I know there's an Aleph there, but it's impossible to know what's on the other side of the Aleph because we weren't designed with that capacity. So also, we're trapped between bet and Zion, the second letter and the seventh letter. We've got a hint at Aleph being just simply the cause of all that exists. Everything else is uncomprehensible. And on the other side of Het, it's behind a fence. But as long as we're in this life right now, interesting, Bet Zion, Baz, is where we get the word Boz, which is where you get the word Bozo. It's a Hebrew word which means a fool, an idiot, scorned, mocked, scoffed, and jested at, ridiculed, disparaged. Bozo. Must have been a Hebrew minded, maybe a Jewish guy who came up with that uh, Bozo the Clown back in the 60s. We're in the land of Bozos between Bet and Zion. You don't want to be a bozo? Turn to Yahuwah. Choose life. And then everything will open up and the rest of all this will make any sense. Tet. Why is the human mind so resilient with language? Think, <coughs> think about thinking. Just think about the ability for a human to think. Uh, it's a whole different matter than instinct. A human's mind, a human mind's playground or laboratory is the use of words tooled with imagination, emotions, built on the framework of sensory perceptions, tethered by intellect and reason, soar as a kite, navigated by will and intention on the wind of idea. Is that a little much? Here, I'll say it again. Think about thinking. A human mind's playground or laboratory is the use of words tooled with imagination. Emotions, built on the framework of sensory perceptions, are tethered by intellect and reason. So emotions soar as a kite, holding the string of intellect and reason, and the kite navigates by will and intention on the wind of ideas. That's the essence of human consciousness. Yod, how in the world do we even know what we're dealing with here? Where is any basis for evaluation, for bearing, for reconnoitering? How do we know what is what? What is up? Is there a down? Who is to say? The world, the sky, our very selves are built as a picture which tells the story. What we see, everything we experience, our very hearts and soul are fractal views of it. In other words, as I said before, everything built in the world is a fractal image, a projection of the fractal model at the root, the core, which is the Hebrew Aleph Bet. So to study everything, which we call science, is the study of the Hebrew Aleph Bet at its essence, the study of the, of the Hebrew Aleph Bet will give you a perspective of how everything works, both physically, psychologically, philosophically, and the whole progression of from the beginning to the end, from the Big Bang to the, to the grand climax. Letter Yod, Yod is the hand that works, cough the open hand. The Almighty Creator offers us the plumb line of His Word as a handrail for our equilibrium, our sanity, our stability. The one and only reference of here, through the earth experience. The earth experience of a human, picture this. You're on a boat, in a storm, in the dark, in a fog, you don't know, up from down, this way from that way, and suddenly there's this thing you can grab a hold of. One solid thing, the plumb line, anoki. The word translated I am is also my plumb line or I will plummet myself. Yahweh plummets himself 
as one handrail for us to hold on to when everything else is completely topsy-turvy and, and so this and that that there's no way to find any bearing on anything. That's what he offers. His hand, the plumb line, Anoki, Aleph Nun Kaf Yod. Lamed, Torah, truth is truth. All else is fantasy, a fabrication, falsehood, a frolic in la-la land. Those are all Hebrew words, by the way. Torah is elemental and forever, as declared from on high, whether we like it or understand it, does not change it. So basically, every time you see the letter Lamed written in a word, you know, oh yeah, that's a picture of the shepherd's staff, it's basically saying, listen, whether you like it or get it or can comprehend it, or somebody else said, eh, eh, the truth is the truth, and Yahweh's Torah is the truth, and if somebody says, oh well, yeah, but he did away with it. Jesus said we didn't have to. It's like, you better hope that's true, because according to the Torah, that's not true. His Torah lasts forever, and if you don't listen to his Torah, and he says your prayers can't be heard, then you're going rat, 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 talking to the fan. You're not talking to his spirit. You better think about what you believe, because if the Christian church has been used as a tool by our enemies to lie to us and deceive us and to lead us astray like they always said he'd give us, if we didn't love the truth, then we might just have been 2,000 years of victims of misleading. And it's like, what? Well, the devil, the devil. No, it's Yahweh did it because our forefathers didn't want or love the truth. And he's now giving us a chance to come back to the Lamed, the teach, Lamed, teach and learn the truth. Mem, the master mind who designed, invented, orchestrated, and sustains this place, built it to endure the rigors it was designed to course, to cruise without fail until the objective is accomplished. Noon, everything is in control. Picture a record playing on a turntable, making a musical recording audible, which was made previously by a conducted symphony orchestra. No matter the dramatic gyrations of the performance, it's all been resolved some time ago. It's a recording of something they played before. Extremes of tensions are theatric colors for the enhancement of value. The audience should just calm down and enjoy the ride. It's a show. The reason you go to movies, from what I hear, people go to see horror flicks, is so you can get scared in a safe environment. The problem is, you know, dragging demons home that continue to haunt you. But the Aleph bet, Yahweh says, look it, it's going to get really chaotic, it's going to get bad, but I'm going to save you, I'm going to deliver you, and I'm going to bring you out the other side. And so when things get really bad, he gave us the alphabetic sequence so we, we can know that we have hope. And the model is Yeshua resurrecting from the dead. He's going to bring us out of the time of the darkness. If that's the dispersion, then what we have is right now modeled as the resurrection of Yeshua from out of the grave, the restoration of his people to ascend into the position of Kufresh. When we come back to his words, pay Zadi. If that's where we are, then all the hope is right before us that this is the restoration. Samic. Humans are designed to only experience a slight fraction of all that went into building the amusement park. Our life and consciousness is but one hair on a shaggy dog. And we don't even see the dog itself. And that hairbrush looks really scary. <laughs> Good laugh at that joke. Thank you. Good cue. <laughs> Letter I am. Appreciate that in your mind. Now think about this. I just made mention of you being the equivalent of one hair on a shaggy dog, and here comes the hairbrush. And I don't even know there's a dog. I'm just a hair that's growing amongst other hairs. Appreciate that in your the I am has to do with this ability that he gave the human mind to weigh, to measure, to ponder, evaluate to look carefully and to do all these things with different vantage points. 22 vantage points. Each one of the letters is another vantage point. Appreciate that in your mind you can equate your entire being to being metaphorically one hair on a shaggy dog. Correlate that to a tree growing where it has been planted. Compare that to the phrase, I am the vine, you are the branches, now bear fruit. Yeshua said that. Consider the stars placed in the sky as a plot map of us being planted trees. Picture a seven-branch menorah being a tree bearing the fruit of light. Picture a stag elk with a seven-point rack as an emblem of noble, virtuous deeds. Imagine a man doing works of righteousness unheralded as that dignitary. Ponder that teaching a child with words, he becomes that engineered stature of man. Words. Astounding concept. 
The human consciousness is a ship on the sea of words, and no harbor will entice him to sit there. We're supposed to be out on the high seas braving the storm. Engage this language. Engaging the storm? Engage the storm of what, whatever's going on. It's This is life on earth. Mm -hmm. And with this language, you realize that Yahweh is my Elohim. Remember hearing a story once that a, a ship in harbor is safe. When there's a storm, it's not safe. The ship was made to be able to navigate the storm. There was a, there's in Reader's Digest, there's another story. A young, a new guy on, in the Coast Guard was on this ship, and it was out at the Astoria Bar up in between Oregon and Washington. Tremendous storm. Mm -hmm. And the, the young guy said to the captain, should we call for some help? And the captain said, we are the help! <laughs> Who else are you going to call? We are the help. If we're, if we're in a heck of a fix, then there's nobody more capable or competent than us. This is our turn at the, at the helm. Pay, the gift of words, how beautiful. And they can be opened and closed. And they can be portals of travels beyond what we ever considered. In off-cast words are hidden keys to man's deepest longings. And the most off-cast word was Yeshua being that very word himself, the Hebrew Aleph Bet, in the flesh. Zadi. And the letters which spell the words tell another story underlying any story the words may tell. The keys will be found. It is written into the score. We just read about that in the Zadi position, saying, you know, Yahweh hid his story in these letters and kept it hidden for all these thousands of years until now. And now he's letting it be revealed, this concept of the Erectology study, that in the sequence of the 22 letters is the answer to everything we've always been looking for. And it's right in the pictographs and in the sequencing of the 22 Hebrew letters, keyed to the Moedim and the fact that Yeshua is the Mashiach. In that sequence of the 22 letters of his coming here disguised, being put to death, buried in the tomb three days and three nights, resurrecting, ascending, and coming back, that story for the sake of us having a sin offering that we can be cleansed and find favor and be raised up unto a dignity beyond our qualification, that's in the letters. Who knew? Eclatant accelerando, musical terms. E-C-L-A-T-A-N-T -A -A is a French word A-C-C-E-L-E-R-A-N-D-O, Eclatant El Accelerando, is just this dynamic, brilliant, explosive thrill of rejoicing in music. That's what's written into the score right at Zadi and Kuf, and I believe right now in world history where it pays Zadi, Kuf, somewhere in there, with these words opening up, with Israel coming back to, to realize who it is and how it fits into the story. And that's what's in front of us. Kuf. Hey Daniel, hide the words and seal the sefer until the time of Kuf Zadi. The deed you accomplish must endure 2,730 years of searching and hammering. That's what's happened. Resh, Baruch Atah, blessed are you who endure and overcome till the end. Yeshua talked about that to the seven ecclesia, the seven assemblies, the, what's called seven churches in the book of Revelation, the first three, four chapters. Baruch Atah, usually they say, Baruch Atah Yahweh, Eloheinu Melech Alom. Blessed are you, Yahweh or Elohim, King of the universe, who has, the word Melech is king, but also the one who told us how to conduct our walk. Olam, forever, which endures forever, which is a eternal matters. It's not just King of the universe. It's the one who has told us how to conduct our walk according to worldwide universal well-being forever. Another way to translate those same words. Sheen. A thousand will fall at your one hand and ten thousand at your other, but it will not come nigh you. One of my favorite sayings from American history, I think it was in the Battle of New Orleans, and there was a certain uh, captain, and he had to run a blockade, and the, the, his uh, first mate's crew was saying, those guys got torpedoes, we, we, there's no way we can get through. And the cap captain just said, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead, this, this is it, do or die, it's all we got. They were successful. 
What I'm saying is that attitude, damned torpedoes, full speed ahead, Yahweh is my Elohim, that has to be our consciousness, our vision. Yahuwah Elohi, Tav. The only treasure of worth, worth treasuring, as a takeaway from this human experience on earth, is for us each to become the valuable treasure of He who built this place, which He did for the reason of gleaning a treasure for Himself from it. Yahuwah Zavot, who built this universe, did it in order to extract out of it a treasured people as His own personal treasure. That's the whole reason this is going on, is for us to, you might say, rise to the, equa to the occasion or qualify according to the terms of the equation, which is the Hebrew alphabet, that we can become His treasured people by hearing and listening and doing and hoping and trusting, but there's basically seven things we need to do. Choose life. That lines up the Chet with Passover. Hear His voice. That lines up with Kaf Lamed, the Torah. That lines up with Chag Matzot. Find out how, what His commandments are. Matzot. Mem Zadi Vav Tav. Zadi Vav is instructions, but it also is Matzah. Find out. You know, the, um, it's a, it's like uh, Shakad and Zealous. Two words. One means almond, and the other one means uh, industrious and diligent. It's a, it's a play on words, which Hebrew has a lot of. Take it to heart the matters of his personal regard, lining up with Mem Nun, with Shavuot, counting like incubating the pregnancy of his seed, the Torah, within you, and letting it take on a life, like the Nun inside the Mem. Samik, like the picture of Menorah. Just do what he said. Just do what he said. Blow the shofar on Yom Teruah. Sit down, quit working on Yom HaShabbat, the Sabbath day. Ion. Ion is drawn as a picture of fruit. Bear the fruit of righteousness. Galatians 5.22 gives you a list of the nine fruits of the Spirit. The Samic is a picture of a, of a vine or a tree with branches. Yeshua said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Bear fruit. The fruit of righteousness is a picture of the Ion. The next letter lining up with the pay. Attend to his words with all serious burdenment in response. Micah 6, 8, he has shown you, a man, what is good in Yahweh requires of you. Do justly, that's a picture of the psalmic, being the branches bearing good fruit of righteousness. Love mercy. Have the attitude like of scales of balance. If you have mercy, if you expend mercy on others, mercy will be given back to you. The balancing of the fruit is what you do will come back on you. Evil for evil, good for good. Walk humbly with your Elohim. The word humble, ayin nun hey. Make it your burden to regard his words seriously. Respond. If he says, make noise, shout, blow trumpets on the first day of the seventh month, just do it as if that was your command, your zadi vav, and your burden. Your only obligation that day is to not work, to eat dinner with your friends, Make noise and blow the shofar. No, I can't do that. Well, then he ain't your Elohim. He's <laughs> not your God, and you may not even end up in heaven where you thought you were going to end up oh, because if he's not your too God. too hard, man. Dang, could he make it any easier? <laughs> I know it. The Zadi, the hope set before us, the expectation and the confidence that his words are truly true. And that there is the Mishkan pattern. Choose life, hear his voice, take it to heart, the matters of his personal regard, Leviticus 23, the Moedim, then just do what he said. Bearing the fruit of righteousness, attending to his words with all serious and burdenment and response, and with maintain the expectation and confidence that his words are truly true. That's it in a nutshell. Literally, that's condensing everything in the, the universe down to the 22 letters, condensing it down to the seven pieces of the Moedim, which are the Mishkan pattern, which is reduced down to Aleph Tov. Well, that's Isaiah 40.
So one other one we're going to do, if not now, then we'll do it tomorrow or something, is Isaiah 41, which follows right on the heels of this verse 31 of Isaiah 40, which is really interesting because I found that it follows the Mishkan, the alphabet sequencing pattern as well. And so therefore, if you know the alphabet letter sequence, it, once you start reading, if you can lock in one or two letters that sound just like the meaning of those letters, you can look before it and after it. Sometimes it follows the alphabet sequence, sometimes it doesn't, in which case if you, this is just, I'm just throwing this out as another way to study, if you lock in one or two letters, if they're not in sequence, sometimes you look at them and say, oh, that's spelling a word, and you look up the meaning of the word, and the word has to do exactly with what this is written about. It's really amazing. There was another verse we were looking at the other day. You say, that's Psalmic I and Pei. I forget which one it was. It's written down somewhere. If I find it, I'll mention it in the next video. But it's just really interesting that if you know what the letters mean, you'll find them embedded cryptically all through scriptures in the narrative where the narrative is expressing what one or some of the letters mean and fitting them together like these concepts which are actually spelling words. Just a whole other realization of part of the treasure hunt. Anyway, so we'll get to Isaiah 41 subsequently. Anyway, you got anything else to uh, throw into the mix here? No, that's great, Eric. Uh, no, got nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, somebody asked um, that we do a talk on how the what's called the Lord's Prayer, the uh, Tefillah Bain, the prayer of our of our Father, lines up with the Mishkan pattern. In other words, if you're saying our Father, who how many how many minutes do we have? I got about twelve. Should I do it real quick? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Instead of looking at it in Hebrew, which which is nicer. Abeno Shabbat HaShemayim, or Shabbat Shemayim, our Father who is in the heavens. It Kadosh Shem Ka, hallowed be your name. What does that line up with? To acknowledge Him as our Father is a type of relationship who's in the heavens and that His name is set apart in Kadosh. So the big white fence, the letter Chet, with the four colors, Yod Hey Vav Hey, blue, purple, red, white, is to recognize him as the owner and occupant of that castle, that set apart realm, dimension, controlling force over the entire rest of the universe. So I would take that first phrase and say, well, that lines up with Passover. He took his people out of the bondage of the Egyptians and he became their, technically their Elohim, their Lord and Master, their husband. That's, that's Passover, this, this marriage relationship but also servant-master type of relationship. But then that's another thing where he said, don't call me Baal, call me uh, my, my husband, which is also Bali. Anyway, what I'm saying, there's, there's, Hebrew is all this play on words. But to acknowledge who he is, our Father who art in heaven, Abenu, Shabbat Shemayim, It Kadosh Shem Ka, hallowed be thy name. Completely set apart, like this thing on the other side of the cat. And then you step into the cat, and right in front of you, like we said, choose life is to choose him. Hear his voice. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it in heaven. King, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's the Torah. If he's your Lord and Master, your husband, your father, do what he said. Learn his Torah right inside Pesach is Chag Matzot. Right after he brought them out of Egypt, he gave them his Torah, and he said, take it to heart. So that he, Yeshua said the Torah, his instructions are as a seed, and Shavuot is being pregnant. So it's like right inside the wedding picture is getting impregnated by his seed. That's the Mem Nun that we're supposed to bring forth with measures of our heart. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Psalmic, lining up with... Give us this day our daily bread. How? Give us this day our daily bread. The letter psalmic has to do with do what he said. So give us today whatever we need to sustain us with energy, with perspective, to just be the, the tree growing where it's planted, to be the hair on the dog just waving in the wind. and We're, we're, we're just here doing what you said.
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's the measure for measure. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. With the measure you use, it's measured for you. You put mercy, you will get mercy back. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. It's the teeter-totter. It's the balancing of scales. Everything he said to do, which is in righteousness and misfot, in judgment, in justice, will be brought back. And so all we need to do is keep doing what he said. He's just expressing for us to do what he's done for us for us to do for others. He, he wants the, its exact model. Yeah. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That lines up with the letter pay. That lines up with attend to his words with all serious burden. Lead us not into temptation. That's kind of a strange one. He's not leading us into temptation, but why are we asking him not to lead us into temptation? It's, that's a bit of a mystery. I'd have to look at that in the Hebrew and see if there's something else there. He's not leading us into temptation. He's telling us the way to go. Yeah. So I, I don't understand the English translation That's of that phrase is what I'm saying. There's something that needs to be looked at there. But deliver us from evil. That's a request. Okay, pay is the mouth. Pay, this lines up with the altar of incense where our relationship, uh, the prayers of the Kadoshim Elionin, that, that has to do with walk humbly with your Elohim. So it's like, Look, at, I'm just following you, and I know, I know you're not going to lead me in temptation. I know you're not going to lead me over the cliff. And if somebody's trying to, I'll recognize that is not being from you. It's a false shepherd. It's somebody who's trying to take advantage of me. Maybe it has something to do with that. But my point is, I'm just showing you where the phrases of the Lord's Prayer can be fit to the Mishkan pattern. And then when you get to the Zadi, which is the sprout, which is the scepter of righteousness, for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. It's like this, this, uh, this scepter, the, the throne, the him, uh, the resurrection. It's a picture of the Zadi, the resurrection of Yeshua, Aaron's rod that budded. Remember, it was that almond branch that overnight put forth, uh, it was a dead stick, walking staff, scepter, and it, and it put forth a branch and leaves and uh, flower and fruit, almond fruit, all overnight. That's a picture of that resurrection, that restoration, that, that story, that, that restoration that we have the expectation, the kava, the kuf, which is the following letter, hoping, believing that all these things are true. So what I'm saying, this question of what is the Lord's Prayer model of, it's to say, by me just saying those words, I can wrap my mind around it in English, but if I appropriate their the phases of transition of each of those subjects of the Lord's Prayer, if I make the equivalent to the piece of the Mishkan pattern, which is the, also these letters, which is also these Moedim, then it pulls the whole thing into it. So as I'm saying these, these pieces of the Lord's Prayer, I can picture walking through the Moedim, Passover, Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, Yom Teru, the blowing of trumpets, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, Paths of righteousness. Sukkot and Shemina. That's right. Paths of righteousness. Paths and also, is a cyclical it's a, nature. Yes, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a, I was going to say it's a cyclical model is that yeah. which goes around and around, which is through the annual cycle. All these things are embedded in the spelling of the Hebrew words. The more you study the scripture in Hebrew, the more you'll see them and realize that, that the Hebrew is a multi-dimensional, hyper-dimensional language. And to put it in the Greek language, uh, Latin or English, is to reduce and curtail it down to some sort of bones, but losing the flesh of it. So, if anybody else has a subject they want us to address, we could maybe do that. Just write in. Oh, you're getting flooded. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll try to do the best I can. And bear with us. We can only get one a day uploaded out here off-grid, satellite internet. So, we'll get them out as we can. Shalom. 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 Hallelujah.